All right, Stefan Rumara, MMA Net. I'm here with the Lion Killer, Gary Tonin, who makes his fourth MMA appearance at One A New Era against Anthony Engelen. So this is probably your most dangerous opponent so far. Uh, how have you prepared for for Anthony? Yeah, so the main thing was just developing a habit of getting kicked and avoiding do, uh, getting uh, taking damage, right? So I brought in a lot of opponents, or sorry, I brought in a lot of training partners uh, that were Muay Thai and kickboxing specialists um, to make sure that I was constantly getting kicked, whether it be my legs, body, head. Um, so I was constantly protecting myself and learning how to counter uh, those movements because th that would be the main thing that I was worried about compared to my previous opponents. I would say that my previous opponents, albeit that Sung Jung Lee and my last opponent was uh, Taekwondo, uh, champion. Uh, he didn't really use kicks much in his fights, so I wasn't too worried about it. Um, but all of my previous opponents were much more hands-based fighters, much more of a Western boxing background, I would say, overall. Um, whereas this next opponent is much more of a kickboxer. I see him throwing a lot more kicks. Um, so it was something that I just wanted to be ready for. And not just ready for from a standpoint of you know, taking damage, but not getting KO'd too, right? Because we've seen him do that before. So... And how have you had to alter your uh, grappling style for MMA and sp specifically this opponent? And how much, how important has uh, Danaher uh, uh, been in that uh, evolution? Danaher is extremely important in my mixed martial arts career. Uh, I, I train under his supervision every day. Uh, I do two grappling sessions. I do one MMA sparring every day. Um, sometimes two, uh, when I was doing the sparring with the kickboxers, uh, on two days a week, I spar twice, um, first with them and then once, uh, under John's supervision. Um, so pretty much everything that I do as far as martial arts is concerned is supervised and, uh, by John and he gives me advice and he gives me things to study and really everything that you see me do in the cage comes from him in some, some degree or it is, it is adjusted or, or, uh, observed by him in some way and um, we kind of work together as a team to make sure that uh, I'm on the right track as far as getting better as a fighter. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I fully answered your question. I feel like there was a piece of it that I missed there. but I, I, th I like that answer. Um, so um, you're striking. What, what are you doing to, I mean, I guess, fill, fill your holes in the striking department? Are you bringing some, someone special who's, uh, and is Danaher overseeing the striking too or only the grappling department? Yeah, I think a lot of people forget that Danaher has been coaching MMA for a really long time. Um, he was George St. Pierre's mixed martial arts coach. Um, among others, he helped uh, at least a piece of their coaching. Uh, got Guys like Chris Weidman, Rory McDonald, um, he's involved in a lot of their camps and things as well. So when John does things, he never just goes in like halfway. Um, so if he's going to be helping you with mixed martial arts, he's going to study mixed martial arts to the fullest extent and many different martial arts that are associated with it. So um, through all of those years of knowledge doing that, um, this is before he was a high-level grappling coach, uh, I believe that John uh, has really has a really good understanding of what it means to be a quality mixed martial artist and what it means to become the best, you know, obviously coaching George. Uh, and in doing that, uh, he's able to kind of structure everything. Um, so it, really everything that I do is, is instructed and coached by John, including the stand-up. Uh, a lot of people ask me questions about that. They're surprised by that. Uh, I really just don't think they should be as surprised by that. Yeah, John actually, believe it or not, has a little bit of a striking background himself. Did a little bit of kickboxing, Muay Thai, I think, when he was in uh, New Zealand. New Zealand has a lot of... Uh, a lot of Muay Thai and kickboxing, I believe. Yeah, I mean, he seems to be just generally a, a fight genius. So having him overseeing him and the striking aspect seems like a good idea. Um, so uh, this is a really historic card, the one a new era here in uh, the legendary Sumo Arena. How, how do you feel uh, to be fighting in front of the Japanese fans and especially in such a um, legendary arena? Man, I've been uh, you know, obsessed with whether it be Japanese culture, or Japanese mixed martial arts culture, or any uh, martial art that's been involved with the things that I've been doing. Um, and so many great mis uh, mixed martial artists and martial artists in general have come out of Japan that it's just awesome to be here and be involved in an actual event uh, associated with fighting. Um, so just first and foremost that. And then among all these legends that are fighting on this particular card, you know, a lot of people were like messaging me. They're like, I don't understand. Why aren't you on the main card? It's like, well, uh, Guys, Demetrius Johnson's here, uh, Eddie Alvarez, uh, we got a lot of really good guys, Yachts and Clyde, like, people that are way more important than me, <laughs> like, I'm happy to just be a part of it, like, if I was first fight, I'm pumped, you know, if I, if they put me on uh, and didn't even write my name on the card, it doesn't even matter, man, I just want to be here, you know, uh, and competing, so, 
uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really exciting thing. I'm really happy to be here. And uh, yesterday, I would say you and Ong La and Sang stole the show with your outfits. Uh, you were uh, trying to look like uh, Wolverine. Tell us a little bit about your outfit. And I heard you were like messing with people too uh, regarding the outfit. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people were asking me like, oh man, like, were you trying to look like Wolverine? And I'm like, who's that? Like, <laughs> Logan? I'm like, who? <laughs> what? Yeah. No, but definitely uh, uh, Logan uh, slash Wolverine has been kind of like a... A childhood hero of mine. Uh, I really, from in my early days, I just liked like his special abilities. I thought it was cool that like he could regenerate and stuff when he got injured. And uh, as I got older and older and followed him more and more, he just became more of a relatable character to me. Um, he's just that kind of guy that he has flaws and they're obvious flaws. Whereas a lot of other superheroes and things that you see on a day-to-day -day basis, they're they're too perfect in a way. You know, they're like sure it's something to to try to look up to and try to become like, right? But uh, it's just so much more relatable to have somebody that seems like a real human being with real flaws in front of you that also cares about people and deep down inside like tries to help them and stuff. So he's kind of cool in that respect. I, I like him a lot. But uh, in that regard, you know, I, I just thought it would be kind of cool to dress up like him. Uh, you know, he's definitely been uh, a part of my life in terms of like entertainment and stuff. So um, I just thought it would be fun. So there's so many good fights on this card. It's a historic event. Any fight in particular you're looking forward to, or is it like is it too difficult to choose? Yeah, good question, man. Um, I definitely looking forward to see uh, Eddie fighting um, Eddie Alvarez for the f uh, first time with one championship. Um, that'll be exciting. Um, Shinya, I'm looking forward to watching that as well. Um, uh, looking forward to Demetrius too. I mean, there's just so many guys like Yats and Clyde too. I mean, this. I, I want to watch every fight, man. I'm so pumped. Like, I can't wait to uh, to see this card. Like, this is going to be, you know, sometimes after I'm done fighting, I'm like, ugh, you know, and I just want to go back to the hotel right away. But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that this time, even though I'm, like, third fight on the card. Like, I'm going to want to watch everybody afterwards. Oh, well, hopefully I can, and I'm not KO'd viciously. But we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a good thing being early on the card, huh? And I just want to ask a little bit about the weight cut. So now you're fighting at featherweight for the first time, which is actually 155. Um, or do you think you're going to stay at this weight class? And how have you adjusted like your weight cut for this weight class? And just uh, because one championship has a unique uh, weight cutting structure, like how have you adapted to that? And do you think you will stay at featherweight um, for the remainder of your career? So this is the second time I did it. I fought two fights at 170, and then this one's the second fight at 155, my last one with Sung Jung Lee. But it is still very a new thing for me to fight at uh, this in this weight category. It is uh, not easy for me to make this weight uh, by any means. Uh, it's reasonable. Uh, it's easier than you know uh, making like a 145 for. Uh, you know, another organization or something where they do the, the weigh-ins differently. Uh, but I would say that, uh, you know, I like this weight class. I definitely think I match up more in body size to my opponents at 155 than I did at 170. I mean, if you guys really take a look at the difference between me and Rahul Raju, my second fight, I mean, I think you could see a huge difference in body size. I mean, he's taller, he's bigger upper body, bigger lower body. I just thought, it was, I, when I saw that, I was like, man, I really don't think I'm in the right weight class. Um, I think you'll see See me at 170 again. There's a lot of guys in that division that I I, I would love to uh, have fights with in the future. But right now we're going to be focused at uh, 155. I just made weight today in hydration, so usually the second day is actually easier for me because you lose a little bit of weight when you're cutting. Um, so I should have no problem making it tomorrow. And uh, yeah, man. So far I'm happy at this weight class. Hopefully I keep killing it. And now yeah, let's do it. All right, don't miss it. Sunday, Gary Tonin makes his fourth MMA appearance. Don't miss it. Uh, Sunday afternoon from the Sumo Hall. Gary, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you, man. Good luck in the fight. Thank you.